good afternoon to you. Use it or lose it. Keeping your gear going. I'd like to go through my experiences with various types of gear actually, starting with microphones but other things as well which you may use and some things which you might not use but they all have some similarities between them. This is just my understanding of my experience and hopefully it might be of uh, some use to some of you. So really it's to do with using your gear because it seems to like to be used. Let me explain. I'll go with microphones. Mostly microphones seem to be quite reliable to me. Um, dynamics more so. But with this microphone, the Rode NT1, I did have some issues with, uh, wasn't very old, with a kind of sound in the background. Tried it on various cables, various supplies, blah, blah, blah. Eventually sent it back to Rhodes, got a 10 year guarantee. They took it back. They said, we can't find anything wrong with it. So when it arrived there, it wasn't doing that sound obviously, but it was with me quite rel reliably. In fact, it, it didn't not make a sound after a while. Anyway, they said we replaced a capacitor just in case. Now, in condenser mics then you've got electronics and capacitors also in computers, there were bad batches of capacitors which caused problems with some motherboards. So that's not to do with using it, really. Though it might be because capacitors, as I understand it, do like to be used to charge and discharge, charge and dis that's what they're designed for. And if they're left discharged for a long period of time, sometimes they don't seem to like it. It might cause them to fail. Similar thing happened with this, AKG, Master Reference. It's intermittently noisy. I'm suspecting, again, electronics could be a capacitor. As I say, with dynamics, if they're looked after, I don't think I've come across one. I've got some old ones. I don't think I've, and ribbon mics as well. I don't think I've come across one that's failed. Um, the only thing with them might be the foam rots underneath. So check that out and replace it if it's going. If you leave it, Till it's completely crumbling it might get into through the grill underneath and into the diaphragm and stuff like that so change the the foam it's the kind of thing that if you're using it of course you'd notice well if you do any service just have a look every now and then but if you put it away for storage for several years you'll probably find the foam's gone before and you don't even know and then you start using it and blast some of the crumbs of foam into it so again it's using it tends to mean that you keep an eye on it as well with age, glues can go. I've never found a problem with that. I've seen it on the biodynamic. Yes, once some glue did go and something came loose. The glue was all brown. It was 30, 40, 50 years old. Magnets apparently can lose their magnetism, but that has nothing to do with use, really. I'm going to move on to mixers, and I'm not wearing my headphones. So I don't know if you'll hear this. You know with my mixing desk, so you've got pots, which are volume pots, so you turn them. You've got faders. Generally speaking, I'm thinking what happens is you've got atmospheric moisture with particles and stuff in it. And I think things just gradually over a period of time start to sit and evap the water evaporates and leaves and more and more. It takes quite some time. But then if you're using it regularly, it seems to keep that clear because it doesn't get very long before the thing's wiped over. I think the same with pots. If you don't use it, the same thing's happening and it evaporates and leaves and evaporates. And after a while, I think that becomes hardened, the um, contamination. And then when you start to rub, use the pot and the fader, you might be able to clear it away by using it, or you might find it's not so uh, compliant. So you might need to spray it and so on and so forth. And it might damage the surface. So again, I'd say with that regular use, tends to minimize that, tends to keep lubricants free and moving in the right place and not hardening and setting. That's the only thing I've really noticed with mixers where it's quite a big thing, you know, like the pots and the faders, because without those, you're stuffed. So that's what I've noticed with those. Amplifiers are maybe hi-fi amps. I'm talking really about guitar amplifiers. Capacitors, again, they do um, deteriorate uh, over time anyway, but without use, 
I think they deteriorate. And what I've noticed, even like maybe in Transformers and so on, is if things are left to get damp, I think they can get damp quite deeply. If you understand what I'm trying to say. It's like within the transform, you've got all those windings. And I've had some things like that where once I started using them, the heat, particularly from valve amps, I just got the feeling that maybe it dried it out and that those slight, um, uh, not resistance, the opposite of resistance, current flow between things may be caused by the moisture. Don't know, they just seem to like to be used just to get up to temperature. And for something like that, with one of the things I suspected, it might have been the transformer and some breaking down of the... Um, the coatings and maybe moisture in there deep within that they need to be on for a long time for that to evaporate because it's way within all those windings so it's not just a switch it on for half an hour and it's done i could be talking nonsense there but that's been my feeling amps again then yeah pots again switches so again contamination if this thing isn't if you're continually switching on and off regularly that surface is getting uh getting hit and disturbed you leave it off again atmospheric moisture and contamination building up drying up building drying over a period of time and then you come to use it and you've got two contaminated surfaces and if i've seen sparking and stuff you can sometimes get in and clean them other way or maybe have to replace them but i think you know regular use extends the life of these things in my experience similar for cameras here's one had an issue with it, been sat for quite some time. I changed the batteries. Watch out for batteries. More on that later. Something wasn't quite working with this. Uh, which, this is a mirror lockup switch and you press it and uh, something wasn't quite, what would happen is, if I put it on a this speed, a, a little slow one, it won't do it now, hopefully. So what I've noticed is on that second click, there'd be a, sometimes it would sound like that, sometimes it would be like a double click. So you get your click, click, click. And sometimes it would sound slightly different and I couldn't wind on. So it was a bit as if something was again seized up, lubricants dried out. I used it and used it just playing with it and things did improve. And then I, I just took the risk of spraying in there with electronic contact cleaner, the kind of thing you'd clean the pots with. I used the one with a bit of lubricant in it. Since I've done that, so far so good. But again, these don't like being left. I've noticed, again, maybe those con contaminants get in there. This seems to like to be used. Watch out for the batteries, of course. If you're using it regularly, your batteries would rarely uh, leak because you'd deplete them and have to change them. If you don't use it regularly, the batteries sit in there and the next time you open it up, it's all corroded. So... Again, using it tends to keep things in order. Lenses. Uh, so cameras, yeah, lubricants, switches, capacitors, foam on the back of cameras and the mirror damper. The foam deteriorates. I imagine it deteriorates whether you use it or not. But if you're using it, you'll see that perhaps and have it replaced before it becomes goo and gunk and bits fall into all parts of it and just, you know. So again, if you're using it regularly, you might well come across that. Lenses, had an issue with this one. And it was that, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I don't know if you can see that that's opening up. And I don't know if you can see that the opening up is a little bit slow. Shuts down okay, which is fine. It was a lot slower than that. And... Again, I think it was lubricants had just started to become set. And also, remember, when you store these things, this one had been stored for a long time, it's stored in a certain orientation, whichever way that was. It might have been like that in its case for years. So the grease is likely to... Also, the grease tends to separate, so you get the oil away from the thicker part of the grease, and migrate... And again, if you're, if you like, stirring that up by using it and then you put it away and it's this way up, then you put it away and it's that way up and then you put it away, any of that, just leaving it in one orientation and things tending to all um, head in one direction is lessened by the fact you're using it and it gets, if there's any slight separation when you use the thing, it probably stirs the grease back together again a little bit, I'm, I'm thinking. 
So that can be an issue with those. Again, use, use the thing. I've had some other lenses with sticky things not quite working, and after you use them a few times, everything started to uh, to free up. You can imagine that if it's not used, you're just using it just keeps things free, and of course, the uh, focusing mechanism. Tape and record decks. Oh, with the lenses, also you can get fungus growing on the lens elements and you can get separation where the elements that are cemented start to separate. Use doesn't affect the separation that I can think of but fungus if it's stored somewhere that's slightly damp and it's not getting any fresh air around it and new stuff it's you know it's like you're asking for mold really aren't you whereas using it taking it out it's getting the air changed around it getting dried out in the sun well not necessarily want to put it in the sun but you know just hand temperature and actually a camera the other day was relatively warm from being in the sun no problem but it, I was out using it so of course it was a sunny day so again using them seems to be better than not using them what about this don't know if any of you remember what this is Sony Professional Walkman tape deck again capacitors in there though I don't think they're sensitive perhaps as higher powered capacitors that take more charges just runs off nine volts but again switches this got a little bit noisy the uh record level the slider on the front the volume a little bit lighter again i'm sure it's atmospheric uh, contamination just over the years just sitting there sitting there and then drying and more and drying more and more layers of it and then when you come to use it it's a bit um another thing about these it's, they've got many belts in them, rubber belts. And you can imagine that, I'm going to make this larger, you've got a pulley like that onto a larger pulley and this, this spins the belt and drives this one. When it's left, the belt is over quite a tight curve. Next time you use it, it stops. Very unlikely that where it stopped last time will be the same place. That, that bit that was on a tighter curve will be somewhere else somewhere else somewhere else very unlikely it's ever really going to be exactly the same place if you keep using it when you leave it sitting it's on that tight curve and as the belt tends to harden anyway it might tend to crack over that tight curve whereas it wouldn't if it kept stopping if you were using it which possibly tends to keep the belt more supple anyway i don't know about that i'm just imagining that bit but it's certainly not going to be sat over that tight curve starting to deform and maybe pull apart and then snap so uh again use also the batteries of course keep an eye on those belts the same applies to record decks if it's a belt drive so lubricants belts and switches bicycles simple enough these are all the things i'm into by the way but if they're left i've got one with disc brakes now then the discs can rust normally it would get wiped off and again if you leave it don't use it and don't use it the, the rust tends to eat further in and then you've got a pitted surface and it's ruined it obviously other than that bicycles are pretty obvious just lubrication and so on now i get onto my van two things from the previous thing i think i've just mentioned with the van cam belt i've got a rubber cam belt on mine and my mileage particularly recently hasn't been very high and I'm looking and thinking, oh, 60,000 miles, I think, or five years. I think it's done nowhere near 60,000. So I tend to think, well, I can leave it. But again, yes, you probably can leave it longer, but don't do this. Up to you, you're playing roulette. But again, that belt deteriorates as well, whether it's used or not. And it'll be sat over a tight curve that way. Then it goes over a bigger curve, I think, on mine. And then it comes on a curve that way, which is quite tight, the roller for the tensioner, and then the water pump. And if it's sat left on that tight curve, Again, every time you use it, it's very unlikely it's going to, when you switch off, it's going to be exactly that same place. So for the same reason, using it, what else have I found with my van? Switches and contacts, again, um, just that contamination, it's out parked on the street in the damp and so on, just building up. And uh, again, the discs, just recently I had to have them replaced because the guy said, well, they're just rusted and pitted because they hadn't been used in lockdown and stuff. So I had to pay for new uh, discs to be fitted which is not cheap I can tell you 
And once again, I seem to have noticed that with the van using it and the heat of the engine drying everything out, perhaps, seems to, little things which didn't quite work, because it's getting old anyway, seem to work better when it was warm. Who knows? This simple device, fountain pen, if you don't use it and you leave it with ink in it, I don't know if this one, I don't think this one has got any ink in it. No. So fine. Not much to go wrong there. But if you leave it with ink in it, as you can imagine, I don't know if you'll be able to see. You all know what a fountain pen looks like. But you can see under the nib there, and uh, there's a, a black feed, and there's feed holes, which you know, I don't know if you can see because I can't see what I'm doing. So you can imagine what happens. There's all the ink in there with the pigments, and the ink dries, and you've left it for years, and it just gets caked in there. In fact, one pen I bought might even be this one. And the guy said it doesn't work, so it's a very good price. And I thought, well, I can get parts and so on. I can maybe figure it out on that type of person. What happened was I soaked it, and a load of ink came out. It was empty. And I thought, that will do. Flushed it through. I thought, I'll leave it overnight. When I looked the next morning, more. So flushed it through. I thought, well, I may as well just keep doing this until it stopped. The next night, more, until eventually no more came out. So it was obviously completely caked with dried ink, and that's why it wouldn't write. Obviously, if you use it regularly, you're going to keep running out of ink and filling it, flushing the ink through, filling it, flushing it through, fine. So again, use um, tends to keep things working in that instance. That's about it. You get the idea. Two sayings which we have in England, you probably have it all over the world as well. One is then, in doing all this, using it, but don't fix what ain't broken, is one saying. So, um, thinking, oh, no, 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 maybe I should take this apart and maybe clean that and spray this and clean when everything seems to be okay. Just use it. Don't fix what ain't broken, because you know what happens. I've done that. And it ended up in a long, 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 I finally got the thing working when it was working okay before. And here's another one. Leave well enough alone. So, for instance, with that camera, that issue on the front there was really to do with the mirror lockup, which I don't use. So I thought, well, I'll just keep using it. And I took the risk with the spraying because that's quite simple. I couldn't see it would really do any harm just to see if I could fix it. But otherwise, I thought, I don't use that anyway. The rest of the camera is working fine. Rather than trying to take it apart or sending it off and then that a whole string of things might might happen, you know, leave well enough alone. And uh, finally, bear in mind with keeping all these things going, everything comes to an end eventually. So what are you going to do? Oh, and one more thing. That's I think all this thing about using applies to your body as well. And without your body, none of this is any good. So uh, use your body too. Hope you're well.